53-year-old man marrying a 9-year-old girl is definitely wrong. Today, in Cairo, New York, London, it's wrong because it's a violation of the law. Gedora Comnen, the wife of King Baldwin III of Jerusalem, was born in 1145. She became the wife of King Baldwin III at the age of 13. But maybe today, in some other parts of the world, is not wrong. Because it's not violating the law or the customs and traditions of people. And maybe in those three cities, Cairo, London, or New York, a few centuries ago, it was not wrong because it was not violating anything too. So to say that something is wrong or not, you have to say it's wrong because of what? Because it's violating what? Now let's go through European palaces to see more of these cases. In the 12th century, on September 14th in 1169, a Byzantine emperor named Alexis Comnius II married a beautiful girl named Agnes when her age was only nine years old. It was an official and natural marriage back at that time. Also, when do people get married? Usually people get married after they finish their studies because it's very difficult to study and be married at the same time. So in the cities you find girls getting married in the age of 22, 23, after they finish college. In the villages where usually people don't go to college, you find uh, girls getting married in the age of 18, 19, after they finish school. What do you think was the case when there were no schools or colleges? What, what were girls doing? They were just getting married as soon as they reached puberty. Mary, peace be upon her, gave birth to Al-Masih ibn Maryam, or Jesus, when she was only 13 years old. Actually, today, after 1500 years, you find in the U.S. girls getting married by the law at the age of 13. In New Hampshire, the age of marriage starts at, the age, uh, at 13 years old for girls by the consent of their parents. In Texas, 14 years old. In uh, Missouri and Mississippi, 15 years old, by the consent of their parents. Also, uh, in Spain, until 1995, it was 12 years old. And now it's 13 years old. In Canada, uh, 100 years ago, it was about 11 years old. So it's unfair to judge people according to today's laws and customs. You have to judge people whether they were doing something wrong or, or not according to their own laws and their own customs. To prove that that was the norm at that time, you will find many evidence actually. Uh, first of all, Prophet Muhammad was not the first man in the life of Lady Aisha. Lady Aisha in the age of six was actually engaged to another man called uh, Jubair ibn Mut'am ibn Adi. And you will find also that uh, one of his wives were uh, Lady Safiya bin Tuhuyay ibn Akhtab, the daughter of one of the biggest names of the Jewish tribes in, in Arabia, uh, Huyay ibn Akhtab. And he married her, according to some records, in the age of 14. And he was her third husband. What was her age? when she got married to her first husband? Maybe 10, maybe 9, maybe 11. So even the Jews at that time were marrying their girls in uh, that early age. Also, you will find that Prophet Muhammad married Lady Aisha in the age of 6, but he did not consummate the marriage except in the age of 9. So what was he waiting for for 3 years? If he was a, a pedophile, God forbid, or a child molester, he could have consummated the marriage in the age of six. But what was he waiting for, for three years? Puberty. And some people hey, here may say, and who said that when a girl reaches puberty that she can get married? Simply the Encyclopedia Britannica. I opened the Encyclopedia Britannica, the 15th edition, volume number 26, page number 850, and I found the following uh, definition for puberty. It says, in human physiology, 
Puberty is the stage or period of life when a child transforms into an adult normally capable of procreation. In 1184, Margaret, the Empress of Hungary, got married to Isaac II, the Byzantine Emperor, when she was only nine years old. This is why it's illogical to criticize the marriage of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to Aisha, the daughter of the Prophet's closest companion, Abu Bakr. One may ask himself, did Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had any enemies? You will find that the hypocrites in the Muslim community were enemies. The uh, pagans were his enemies and the Jews of Arabia were his enemies and you will find that they tried by all means to tarnish his image and they called him all the possible bad names that they can but they did not say that he was a child molester why did they forget that would have been an excellent way to damage this man and this new religion but they never used it because simply it was the norm to get married to girls at that age at that time and for those who say that she was a molested child molested by prophet muhammad peace be upon him i ask them do molested children love their molesters and if you want to read the perfect love story shakespeare we all know this famous British outstanding playwright and his famous play Romeo and Juliet, where which the age of Juliet, the heroine of this play, was not more than 13 years old. I recommend that you don't read Romeo and Juliet, because actually Romeo committed suicide at the end of the story. Read Muhammad and Aisha. In the very words of Aisha herself, explaining how beautiful this relationship was between her and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Lady Aisha explains that he used to race with her and she says that when he used to drink from her glass he used to make sure that she sees him putting his lips in the same place where she was putting her lips and to drink from the glass. Lady Aisha says that when she used to say oh my god I have a headache he used to say it's me who can sense your headache in my head. Lady Aisha was so proud that he died in her arms. على رهبته المتبثم اقرأ نبي الله اقرأ وابتهل وبجتر ربك يا نبي ترنمك اقرأ